do the um, people in the travel industry, the people that are members of your organisation, do they have enough runway as far as, you know, has the government done enough and uh, how are you finding the banks? Yeah, uh, thanks, Nick. That's a loaded question. <laughs> Any banks listening? Um, <laughs> I thought banks were created to lend money, <laughs> frankly, mm. but uh, that's op the opposite at the moment. Yeah, it is a convolute, and I agree entirely with what Barbara and uh, Jules are saying from United's point of view. Um, just giving you a bit of a roundup before I get into money, but the, um, you know, the basis of it is that uh, we've been in a lockdown as an industry for 600 days. That's, that's the fact. So other industries have come in and out across the last 20 months, and uh, we've remained firmly in lockdown. Most travel businesses that we see from an after point of view, we see their finances, are negative 90 to 110% on 219. So, as Barbara said, a little bit of money made on that runway to keep people going through 20. But now that we're really just about at the end of 21, any of those funds or superannuation or mortgaged homes, that cash used to support those businesses has now been done. So cash is king, but mm. uh, in travel, it's scarce. Uh, the only way we can get out of this in a cash flow way is for a scale to start. And Julie mentioned it. Um, 58 airlines serviced Australia in 2019. Now we have 18. Mm. Now, you can flick a switch politically and say we're all starting international travel from 18 December. The facts are that uh, aeroplanes aren't going to fly here if they're empty coming in and mm. uh, have quotas on them going out, or even if they can go full out. It's still a very hard road. Garuda, Thai Airways in bankruptcy, basically. Um, and a number of other airlines too. So the, pr the primary carriers, the, uh, the national and solid carriers that have been around for years, um, are presenting for travel agents to um, make money again. It's just going to take time. It's going to be a 9, 12, 18 month outhaul. So we can't get back up to 7 million people flying a year overnight, which is where we need to be. 7 million in and out. Now, I could go on and on about we can't bring people into the country until we get rid of the quarantine. But home quarantine's yeah. no good, right? We need to get rid of the quarantine. Everybody's double vaxxed, which there will be at Christmas, 90%, and away we go. Yeah. Getting yeah. back to money, uh, the banks, the grants, uh, the federal government were great support. Uh, I agree entirely with Barbara that JobKeeper saved the day for most businesses. We lost 15,000 people. Um, 3,000 businesses still. We did have 40,000 in our industry. Now it sits at about 25 uh, and on an edge. Most of those people are hibernating. Um, they are running one and two, two and three jobs rather. 70% of our workforce are women. So how this works with money, uh, the banks in terms of loans for a start, before I go back to grants, the loan side of it, there was a, there's a Commonwealth grant loan uh, facility with an 80% government back guarantee, uh, not I'm situated in Victoria at the moment. Um, not one loan in Victoria has been given out to a travel business. Travel businesses yeah. are high risk mm. and uh, they just will not lend money. They, they, they tout out that there is an APRA technical requirement that uh, prevents taking uh, security over businesses who don't have business ownership, building ownership. They're uh, operating on leases, which is 95% of our businesses. Um, so therefore they can't get past first base. 